Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you another way that we can define the equation of a plane. It's called the scalar product form for the plane, or some people call it the dot product form for the plane. And we can define a unique plane in space if we know that from a fixed origin that the perpendicular distance O to N is given. Let's say we call it D. Then any point on the plane, say P, is given by position vector R. And if we let the angle NOP equal theta, then as P moves around on the surface of the plane, so will the length of R change and the angle theta will change. D will always remain constant. So I've drawn this triangle out, as you can see here, and we can see that by trigonometry, the cosine of angle theta, let's just put it down, the cosine of angle theta compares the adjacent side, D, with the hypotenuse, R. R being the magnitude of this position vector, OP. Now, remember that ON is perpendicular to the plane, and that length then is D. Now, if we introduce a vector which is perpendicular to the plane, let's say we call it N, and we make it a unit vector. So I'm going to just write a little circumflex over that, or hat if you like, over the top. N hat, our unit vector then, which is normal to the plane. Then if I do R dotted with that unit normal vector, then we should be familiar with the scalar product or dot product rule. If you dot two vectors together, it's equal to the magnitude of each of these two vectors. So it's the magnitude of R multiplied by the magnitude of the unit vector. And then it's multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So we've got then R dot N equals magnitude of R multiply magnitude of the unit vector times cosine theta. Now the magnitude of R is R, okay? And the magnitude of a unit vector, well that's 1. So we've got R times 1 times cosine theta, or just simply R cos theta. And you can see that if I multiply both sides of this equation by R, then R cos theta is equal to D the perpendicular distance from the origin here to the plane. So what we've got then is therefore R dotted with the unit normal vector to the plane. Well, that equals D, the perpendicular distance from the origin to the plane. And this is an important equation which we'll be coming to later in this tutorial. OK, so we'll just highlight that there. Now, another thing that we can do with this is take a scalar value, let's say lambda, and multiply it to both sides of this equation. So in other words, we've got, say, lambda multiplied then by r dotted with the unit normal vector. And that's going to equal lambda times d. Now, this is exactly the same as R dotted with lambda n, okay, the unit normal vector. And so that's going to equal lambda times d. But if I multiply the unit normal vector by a scalar quantity, I'm going to make this vector longer. But it'll still be a vector which is normal to the plane in the same direction as ON. So I'm going to just call that N. So what we have is R dotted with a normal vector to the plane is going to be equal to, well, lambda is a constant, D is a constant, and if you multiply these two constants together, you get another constant, which I'm going to call big D. And this is the general formula that we'll be using for the scalar product or dot product form for the equation of a plane. 
Now I'll show you how we can use these equations in the following question. Now this is quite typical of the type of question that you'll get on trying to find the equation of a plane. Find the equation of a plane in scalar product form passing through the point with coordinates 2, 1, minus 3 and perpendicular to the vector 5i minus 2j plus k. And then we've got to go on and say what is the distance from the plane to the origin. Well first of all then what we know is that the general form for a plane is r dot n equals a constant d. And we've got the normal vector to the plane. n, it's 5i minus 2j plus k. So in other words, what I've got then is r dotted with the normal vector, which I'll write as a column vector, 5 minus 2 and 1. And this equals the constant d. And we're going to need to work out what this constant d is. And to do that, we know that we've got this point with coordinates 2, 1, minus 3 lying on the plane. So in other words, if we've got the point here, P, say, with coordinates 2, 1, minus 3, then this position vector for R would be 2i plus j minus 3k. And it must satisfy this equation. So what I know is that if I substitute for r as the vector 2i plus j minus 3k, then if I dot this with the normal vector 5 minus 2, 1, it will give me the value of the constant d. So dotting two vectors together just means we do 2 times 5, which is going to be 10, and to this we add 1 times minus 2, which is minus 2, and we add the result of minus 3 times 1, which is minus 3. So this gives us d equaling 5. So now we know that d equals 5, we can say what the equation of the plane is. So let's just put that down, that therefore the equation We'll just abbreviate that. Equation of plane, okay, in the scalar product form or dot product form is going to be r dotted with n. I won't write n as a column vector now. I'll write it back as this. 5i minus 2j plus k. Well, that's equal to the constant d, which we've seen is 5. So there's our equation of our plane. Now the next part is what is the distance from the plane to the origin? In other words, we've got to work out this distance here, little d. And we've seen that d occurs in this equation here, where we have the unit normal vector. But the equation that we've got is that this is not the unit normal vector. We've got to make this a unit normal vector. And so we need to divide this vector by its magnitude. So first of all then, we'll just work out what the magnitude of this vector is. And we do that then in the usual way by creating uh, the modulus sign here, which is the mod of 5i minus 2j plus k. And we use Pythagoras' theorem, which is the square root then of the sum of the squares of all these components. In other words, 5 squared plus 2 squared, we can obviously ignore the minus sign there, and plus 1 squared. And that comes to the square root of 30. So that means then that to get the unit normal vector, okay, n hat, if you like, that's going to be our vector 5i minus 2j plus k divided by root 30, or if you like, 1 over root 30 multiplied by 5i minus 2j plus k. We'll just put therefore there, okay? Now that we've got that, we can say that therefore r dot 
n hat, okay, must equal, well, we've got to divide the other side of the equation by root 30, so that we have balanced the equation. So this corresponds to d. So therefore we've got the distance, okay, to the origin, to the origin must be equal to 5 divided by root 30. And if you want to, you can rationalize this, multiply top and by, bottom by root 30, and you'll end up with 5 root 30 over 30, which can, reduces down to root 30 over 6. Okay, so I hope it's giving you an idea then how we can use the general form, the scalar product form then for the plane. And then is any normal vector to the plane, d is a constant. But if we want to reduce it down to this form by dividing both sides here by the magnitude of the vector n, then we create this equation here, r dotted with the unit normal vector equals the distance to the plane from the origin, that perpendicular distance. Now, in the other videos that follow, what I'll be doing is working with this general form then, and this form, and I'll show you how we can derive the Cartesian equation from this, and how we can find out where lines intersect planes, angles between planes, a host of other features. Okay?